Scream has worn many masks. For much of his career, he was one of the most exciting aimers of his generation, a cold-blooded killer who looked for aim duels because he knew he could click heads better than anyone. They talk about my one-taps. There's the one-tap machine not malfunctioning at all. Stand away, I want one-tap chicky, one-tap chicky, one-tap chicky. He's got one bullet in it, he's, he's three legs, got one bullet. Oh, <laughs> scream! It's their cheese side where they really struggle. What? Oh. Scream! <laughs> but Scream has also been an outsider, because in the turbulent blender of the French Counter-Strike scene, nothing is guaranteed. And as other rosters rose to become the region's greatest hopes, he was often stuck watching them succeed from the sidelines. As Scandal racked his region, Scream missed two majors, one from a teammate's VAC ban and another because the rest of his lineup was punished for match-fixing. When the time came for a new French super team to rise, Scream was cast out again. And just when it seemed that his time in the spotlight was over, he found a different one. They do talk about, I think it's his, his one taps, right? <laughs> Halfway there, takes down one. Oh, Scream! They're trying to fight! 4v3, Spike now plant. No, no Spike plant, Scream! Scream! Deathmatch right here. It looks like Scream's gonna get involved. He knows there's another. My oh, God. the stud! The man can't be stopped. Adil Scream Benerlitom was born and raised in Belgium but his career has been inextricably tied to France. I started CS in 2006. I think I was 9, 12. Coming up in the competitive scene during Source, Scream's insane ability to click heads immediately attracted attention. 1v4 now, Scream has a big job on his hands. He gets one onto it, Zed, he gets another one, that's three! Scream spamming away, Neil doesn't get the defuse and Scream! And in those early days, no one was legit until you saw them dominate on LAN. And Scream was actually removed from a roster for suspected cheating in Source. But the allegations were never proven. What Scream did prove was that he belonged in the French scene and was among the most exciting players coming up there. In Source, Scream found the beginnings of a career. A huge part of his early appeal was his insane aim and accuracy, letting him quickly one-tap opponents who challenged him. On 3D Max, he and Shox, two of the scene's brightest young stars, looked like the heralds of a new generation of aimers. While France was competing as one of the world's strongest regions for Counter-Strike Source, others were still playing Counter-Strike 1.6. But both worlds collided in 2012 with the release of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. As France's scene coalesced into different rosters of Source veterans, Scream was a member of several, and he immediately showed that he wasn't just good at Source. But it wasn't until he joined Very Games that Scream started to see the kind of reliable success that seemed destined to follow his aim. The team immediately established itself as one of the best in the game, and when they added Shocks to the roster, France's young duo lit up the scene. By fall 2013, they were considered by many to be the best roster in CSGO, as they had finally figured out the dominant ninjas in pajamas who had terrorized the early stages of the game with an incredible land win streak of 87 maps. Look at Forrest coming in here so aggressively and that's actually going to be assist to get the kill on Smith. Scream is one and two. Scream is on fire. It's a triple kill. It's a quick kill for Scream. Unbelievable. Now Gerdwright is going to get one, but MBK will finish him off. How did Scream oh, wow. do that? And their goal was DreamHack Winter 2013, the first Valve major for the game and one that featured a historic $250,000 prize pool. While Very Games had scored several land series wins against Nip heading into the event, they also attended other competitions, like MSI Beat It in China, that some of their opponents chose to skip. As NBK told HLTV in 2013, 
that had an impact on Viri Games' practice. Obviously, it's not going to be like NIP, who have just been pretty much in submarine mode, you know, uh, not trying a lot of stuff on games, not playing so many competitions. Uh, obviously, it affected our preparation. Uh, we're not going to be as prepared as we wanted to, and that's pretty bad for Dream Hack because it's like the biggest event of the year. A shaky group stage saw them drop a game to complexity, but in the bracket stage, they regained composure. In the end, Scream found himself opposite ninjas in pajamas again. But despite their previous success against the Swedes, Fairy Games couldn't continue their hot streak. Just, they're playing rock, paper, scissors here, trying to uh, anticipate Fairy Games' movements and just figure out what they're going to be trying to do and do a strategy that's good to counter it. Oh no, but Scream with the one-hit headshots is taking them down here at B. Almost looked like Terrace or Counter Terrace were able to do it. Now just shocks left. One versus four with the P250. Valiantly charges forward, but it's not going to happen. Ninjas in pajamas takes that thing 16 to 13. Shocks. And it is a fake defuse. Shocks heard that second defuse. And Exist takes him down and will be defusing this bomb for real. Ninjas in pajamas taking another point. Have to start feeling good about this. Now just going to be Shocks. Match point. All they have to do is take down Shocks. And it is game. There's Faflarin. Faflarin going after Shocks. Shocks takes him down. Now a one versus one. Firebirds versus Socks. Bomb has been planted. He's got to go for it. And he's inside of Mini Hut. And he takes him down. Ninjas in pajamas wins this game. Scream settled for third fourth at the first Valve Major. An achievement, but one that fell short of expectations. Still, Scream had a lot to be proud of in his breakout year. He made the HLTV Top 20 Players for 2013 at number 7, and his aim and ability to clutch were already being heralded as some of the best in the game. Oh no, a little bit too slow. Actually, the push is out. Forest exists. They get a kill each. A great start for NIP, and Gedrite comes in, and it's Scream with a double triple. Oh my god, all headshots! And as the award pointed out, 75% of his kills were headshots, an incredibly high percentage even for that early era, and he won more 1v1 clutches than any other player in the game. Scream's roster joined Titan and their form continued until ESL1 Katowice 2014, the next major, where the team didn't even make it to playoffs. And now he's just swinging out towards the library. Marco up inside the site with the Mag 7. Can he make it work? He's looking for one. He's just hiding behind the box. Can he pick up anything off this? He's looking for Satyrus to help. He jumps, but he doesn't get the kill. But Kucher picks up a second. Doge coming up huge. Pick up the kill. Should Kucher get another one? Smith, the last man standing in a one on three as Doge is sitting inside a pit. And Titans have fallen. The Titans are getting knocked out. His fellow aim god Shocks left the roster in April, and rising star Kenny S joined but the team never regained consistency and again missed the bracket stage at the next major, ESL 1 Cologne 2014. As the French shuffle began in late summer, Scream joined a lineup that would become Epsilon Esports, considered the weakest of the three big rosters in the scene. But a storm was about to sweep through not just the French scene, but all of CSGO. Scream's Epsilon teammate, SF, and his replacement on Titan, Kali, were both vac banned for cheating. Yeah, yeah me, me too, me too. All, all my friends, my French friends, they, they were like talking about like Kali's cheating, I'm sure. But I, I was like, I was like, no, he's playing online. Kali, Titan. What the? F he was playing with Titan. What the? F he took my f place. And both rosters were barred from competing at DreamHack Winter 2014, the next major. Scream could only watch as his former Very Games teammates won the first major for French CS. This is all on Get Right. I might be the perfect man to have left here. Trying to walk in. Pacing himself. He's going to spot MBK first. He goes down. And LDLC, they pick it up. Then, in early 2015, the entire Epsilon roster was accused of fixing an ESEA match against Overgaming. The team, including Scream, was suspended pending an investigation. When the smoke cleared, the rest of the roster was permanently banned. Scream was the only one found not guilty. But the timing meant that he had no roster with which to qualify for the next major at Katowice. As the other French rosters swapped players yet again, Scream just wasn't in the conversation. 
The man that some considered the best aimer of 2013 hadn't managed to show much on a team racked by controversy. And there were lingering questions about Scream's ability to change his one-tap style to incorporate more spraying. I think it's probably fair to say that Scream was one-dimensional in spite of how like absurdly talented he was. This is a player who had like mastered one tapping to the point that it became his go-to, which is really the inverse for what what most players do. Most players default to a spray out of safety, out of like a survival instinct, right? Whereas Scream, it felt like it was almost the opposite. He would commit to the taps so heavily that he would sometimes forego a frag because of it. You look at the riflers who really started to emerge at this time, and you know, even would later become gods. Um, you know, Nico, Elige, you know, these are players who had really like come up and go and had really, you know, kind of been molded by a game, a, a version of Counter-Strike in which, you know, spraying wasn't to be feared. It was to be, you know, embraced and, and mastered. And I think the perception on Scream is that he kind of never really adapted to that. You have said as well in the past, some people criticise you for it, said sometimes in your gunfights you try to one-tap the head too much and maybe that you need to spray more. What do you think about that? Yeah, that, that, that's actually true. In, yeah. I had this problem in the past, but mm. now I'm, 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 I'm a lot better than this now. It was when the Titan roster was picked up by G2 Esports after selling the previous roster to FaZe that they started to pick up steam. Oh. The Angel's gonna go flying in like an Good. angel and gets wrecked by Smith. Smith sends him straight to hell, and I'm really pleased about that. Scream, just look at these headshots. It's disgustingly beautiful to watch. This guy's aim is ridiculous. I don't care. It's against an eco. It's just nice to watch. Scream had a sort of renaissance in 2016, freed from the more structured style of existence when he was replaced by Body. But it wasn't just glimpses of the old Scream, either. CSGO's spray patterns had led to precision spraying at the professional level, an important skill for any rifler. And Scream had changed his game. While headshots were still his specialty, he had varied his approach to include more sprays. All the smoke's raining in, and G2, look how close Scream is playing. You can see them early on. Gonna go for the quick peek. That's the bomb down. Sprays. Oh, what a transfer. Shots Taco down. And Cold Sierra and Furl on left here. Two versus four. What a heroic round from Scream. And that translated to success. At the ECS Season 1 Finals, Scream won the biggest prize of his career when G2 defeated Luminosity in the Grand Finals, and the headshot machine was named the MVP. And there is the smoke, that's gonna basically tell Fnatic what's going on, it's the B-Split. But there's Dennis, ready, behind the crate, the first round comes in, bides his time, but Scream will still be undenied, it's up to Olafi, so with the AWP on the sights. First shot connected, one more player, that's all he needs to find. Scream gets the headshot though, one on one for him. Looking for that one versus one, the next one. Against GW, he's got 50 seconds to play with, but he's just gonna go for it! You know, for players like uh, Scream and RPK, who've been uh, playing alongside Existence for a long uh, time, having struggled to even make it to playoffs of tournament, just make it out of the group stages, and now after their most recent change, uh, bringing in Body and switching Shocks uh, to the role of the in-game leader of the team, they not only can get it get through the group stages, they're also a contender for a tournament, and finally, after a really long time for some of these players, they managed to get an international title under their belt. Scream was having a moment. He still had the aim that had helped him break out in 2013, but he also had a kind of allure that only a master of the game's sexiest play could pull off. They know me as the headshot machine. They know me from the highlights they see. They know me from the matches they watch. They talk about my one taps, and I think for me, aiming is so easy. It's worth mentioning that, like, the fact that Scream was able to play the way that he did in CSGO for as long as he did is actually really impressive. To just walk around one-tapping people in CSGO is really hard. Two more banana. Nice. Flashing. Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah. Why so easy? Why? Wow. So f***ing easy, man. Yeah. Still, while Scream's level of play was able to shine, his team bombed out of the group stage of two more majors in 2016. The closest he had ever gotten to a major win was in 2013. And unfortunately, it was the closest he'd ever get.
As another French super team formed without him, Scream was considered for a spot on FaZe Clan. But that spot was eventually filled when the organization acquired Nico. Scream then spent over a year with Team Envious, who struggled to make much of an impact. After that organization dropped its roster in 2018, Scream took what he could get, standing in for Fnatic, playing on a mixed team called Left Out with Michael Lele, and then joining Gamer Legion in early 2019, though he was benched a half year later and spent almost a year riding the pine. And that looked like the end of the story for Scream. He was still streaming and he was still hitting headshots. Streaming might have been his exclusive path forward, like it was for so many ex-pros. Through tens of thousands of professional kills, a plus 100 1v1 clutch differential, and dozens of what-ifs, the player who had shown such flashes of brilliance had never won a major. But he was given a second chance. Scream didn't have to give up on esports. Instead, he could move to Valorant. So my expectations from Valorant is going to be really high, of course, since I'm leaving CS and I've been playing CS my whole life and CS has given me a lot. So I expect Valorant to, to, to give me something as well. The game wasn't CS, but it was the next closest thing. In some ways, it was an even better game for Scream, with the less precise spray patterns and movement, further emphasizing his signature one-taps. And right away, it seemed like the old Scream was thriving. Scream, last man standing, Bladestorm on mine. <laughs> Halfway there, takes down one. Oh, Scream, the drive by! And now he's in trouble. Suddenly he has to just take the fights and wins the fights. He's still... Oh! Oh! Scream just absolutely beheaded Niso. That is going to leave him ringing. 4v3. Spike now plant. No, no spike plant. Scream! Scream! Deathmatch right here. And they're playing contact, so they'll pick up the pace now. And it looks like Scream's going to get involved. He knows there's another... Oh my oh, god! The third! The man can't be stopped. That third kill was ridiculous. Scream now doesn't lurk. He's looking for an extra one now. That's what comes he's to the the he saw the barrel of Overwolf fall. He picks out again. <laughs> Scream is good for four here. What a fantastic round from Liquid. As part of Team Liquid Valorant, Scream is the clear veteran. But with exciting young talent like Yampi in the lineup, it isn't the end of his story. So my new team is a very young team. We get a lot of potential, but we need, we need, of course, a lot of practice. I have really good teammates who have a lot of potential, but they don't have much experience, so I'm going to try to bring my experience to the team and try to be the best team in the world. The game's first major LAN in Reykjavik, Iceland, is just over the horizon, and Scream could again be in a position to show the world that he belongs among the best players in Valorant. There are still more chapters to be written, and it's hard to say exactly how Valorant will unfold. It's possible that Scream could even find himself facing old teammates in his new game soon. But one thing now seems clear. The Scream from CS that lit up our screens and inspired us to embrace the one tap won't fade away. It will echo in the halls of esports history. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.